It has been written that absolute unmixed attention is a form of prayer, right? Now, I am interested in bliss. I am interested in grace. I am interested in gratitude. And it seems to me, upon deconstructing these rhapsodic moments in which we lose ourselves, we find ourselves free of our inner chatter, free of our monkey minds, that what is actually going on is that our monkey mind is being eclipsed, it's being dissolved, it's being absolved by something else that is occupying our attention. So when we think about holy moments, when we think about reverential instances, when we think about moments in which we unfold like the stamen of a flower that blooms, what seems to happen is that we are being completely immersed and consumed by our perceptual apparatus and it's drowning out all the rest of the noise. You know, Charles Darwin once wrote that attention, if sudden and close, graduates into surprise. You're startled into the moment, right? And this then graduates into astonishment. All of a sudden you are gawking. And this then graduates into the holy grail of all, stupefied amazement. Now when you are in a state of cosmic wonder, when you are in a state of stupefied amazement, you're in a liminal zone. You fuse cognition and dream. You enter the perceptual modality of the child. You're in daydreaming mode. You are again consumed by what you are beholding. Terence McKenna famously said, you become what you behold. Henry Miller once wrote that even a blade of grass, something quotidian, something as simple as a blade of grass, when given proper attention, when seen through a microscope, becomes a magnificent, marvelous, fantastical thing. And so again, it goes back to our capacity to spotlight attention and use it as a means to absolve ourselves from ourselves and enter a state of ecstasis, right? Which literally means to be beside oneself. Now, some people describe this as an opiated adjacency, right? We're torn open by this intoxication. We stand aside and beside and in spite of our selves. <laughs> and when we get there, man, there's a sense of reverential awe. There's a sense of gratitude. We find what we're looking for. We finally taste that grace. <laughs> It'll make even the most secular man <laughs> feel tinged with religiosity. It'll make even the most cynical unbeliever feel or perhaps see the light. And it is after these moments that I am, and it is these moments that govern my life. They are my North Stars, they are my... <laughs> they are my everything. And I hope that, uh, I hope you feel inspired to make them your everything too. <laughs>